I reached out to Daryl Jones, who is the bass player with the Rolling Stones for th over 30 years. And Daryl's got, I mean, if you want to see what he's about, he's got a documentary called In the Blood that you can check out. But Daryl, what blew me away is, he's playing with the Stones, which is a pretty major gig. That's uh, significant. But I've you heard hear about that. Miles Davis, and he played with Miles for a number of years, left, and Miles usually, you're done. You li I like you, you're good, but you never come back. He right. came back. He's that good. Right. Sting's a bass player. Yeah. He stings he bass player. Yeah, right, yeah, that kind of stuff. And he I saw the documentary of making the album, and I was like, this guy's good. Really? No, really. Really? No, really. Really? No, really. Well, let's say hi to Daryl. Daryl, Dar I'm so thrilled you're here, man. Man, I'm very happy to be here. Sarah, let's, let's run through this for just for a minute, the, the background. Sure. So you did play with Miles, and the coolest thing about that story, I think, for me, Miles Davis never looks smile. No album cover with him going, <laughs> you don't see him like at a barbecue sitting there laughing, hitting the slap him back. But I had a different impression of him, that he was really tough and really difficult to work with. And then I read your stories, and he was like a parent. He looked out for you. Uh -huh. And the coolest line, I wrote it down, which, which, and Jason, you'll get this for acting too, when you're embracing somebody. So he's daunting, but he told Daryl that when he auditioned, if I don't hire you, it's not because you're not good. It's just because you, it, you don't fit this thing. It has yeah. nothing to do with you, which is uh -huh. very generous to do to somebody. Tell us about your audition for Miles, because it's wild. Oh, no, no. He was, uh, I mean, first of all, he was funny. You know, he started joking with me on the elevator, upsta uh, on the ele elevator upstairs to the, to the apartment. He says, uh, I'm chewing gum. And he says, uh, give, give me a stick of gum. And I said, it's my last piece. And he said, you mean you came all the way to New York and you only bought one piece of chewing gum? <laughs> you know, so he's just starting to <laughs> right, yeah. And then he said what you, what you mentioned earlier. He said, listen, man, if it doesn't, this doesn't work out, it doesn't mean that you can't play. I think he understood, first of all, you know, that he was this huge figure. Yeah. And knew that, you know, he could you could end a guy's career yeah. over something like that. Yeah. And I think he wanted to be sure not to do that. How but, generous. But, you know, he was always incredibly generous with musicians. And so the stories that you hear about Miles outside of the music community, people huh. looking inside, are very different than what people will tell you about, you know, the musicians that he played with. He was funny, you know, yeah. and, and, and very generous. And even guys who didn't work out in the beginning, he would give them a chance. He wouldn't just, you know, close the door the moment that you did something wrong. He would, he would you know, try to give you a chance to find your place. And so... And your you know. future opportunities, a lot of them came out of that because oh, people saw you with Miles and figure there. The other story, and then we'll move on from Miles. I love that he called you. Tell about when he called you in the middle, like two in the morning. Yeah, you know, called me in the morning, and um, I mean, there's a number of those. But this you is know? when you said when you found a riff, you played a riff, and you yeah, were, yeah, no, the, that first night that I was on stage, I was hoping that I found like you know, a gem, you uh, know, and I did. I stumbled on it, and after a couple of times through, got it together, and you know, later that night, four o'clock in the morning, I get a phone call. And he says, Dell, listening to the tape, if you don't play that bass line tomorrow night on Scott, Hopscotch that you played tonight, it's curtains for your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, you know, he was... He but that's was, a dual message. That's, I really liked it. That's play it again, but experiment. Go for it. Yeah, no, no, true, true. So now you're, you're, mm. you, you move on from Miles. You've played with... Uh, the list is insane. You played with Madonna. Yeah. Which is... Which is this I always ask Jason, you're on Broadway. What's the joy of having to, to do the same show over and over again the exact same way? Because you can play anything, except with the Madonna tour, you got to play that. Well, that becomes the gig. To, to play that the same way with feeling, you know, putting as much emotional, you know, emotion into it as you can and getting it right every night or coming as close to, to that as you can. But Daryl, let me ask you a question to, uh, to cross-reference that. So if I'm doing a musical on Broadway, um, there's the way the man wrote it. There's the way I've sung it for five weeks. But on any given night, if I want to back phrase it, if I want to make a quarter note, a dotted quarter, I mean, I have the leeway to do it. If you're backing a singer like that, do you have, are you allowed to be a little improvisational? Can you deviate? Can you enhance? Or are you really, is it, do it the way we did it and don't deviate and don't, you know, what's, well, what's there's, the rule? Well, there's a whole lot of different, uh, you, know, there, the, you know, there's a, 
there's you have to play exactly the same thing, exactly the same way every night. Mm -hmm. And then there's, you know, complete improvisation. And so with Madonna, because that tour was so um, mechanized. Right. You it's had to play it the show. same yeah, way. Right. Yeah, you know, you, some, there was a, you know, another bass player under the stage right. playing from a computer, not a bass player, but, a, a, you know, another signal playing synth bass wow. coming from under the stage. So I had to match that. Now, if I could figure out an interesting way to move away from that and have what was still playing play right, and me play with it and have it, you know, enhance that, then I guess I could have done that. But basically, you, you know, you shift what the gig is. The gig is to play that perfectly every night with feeling and that becomes the gig of opposite, completely opposite on a miles gig. It's finding a great thing to play tonight over something over a groove that works. So you got to be really present every second. You can't take a mini vacation in your brain. You got to be like right yeah, there. No, you gotta, you gotta. Can I ask you one other question that just popped up because of that? Mm hmm. Being there every night, what's it like for the guy under the stage playing the, the bass? And well, great, you don't have to not, dress up, but he's not playing a computer. Oh, the computer's computer. Yeah. But they do have offstage musicians playing along with some some bands too. I don't. You don't hear about that very much anymore. No, not offstage. But wait, why is why is it just for the fullness of sound that they're they're, they're yeah. doubling the bass line? Oh yeah, that's that's dance music. So there's a lot of synth bass. Uh huh. And she wanted to have that you know that sound, but she also wanted the you know, the, 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 the human element as right, well. Right. You know, Fun so. tour? Pardon? Fun tour? Oh, yeah, it was great. It Part, was really a lot of partying? Uh, we've had fun. Look at the face. Yeah, By the way, fun. when he makes that face, and I don't know that well, that's the, I'm not telling you about 80%. Yeah, cause, cause you can see like 900 things went through his head. Yeah, about, it's edit, so funny. Edit, edit, admit, edit, admit. Exactly. <laughs> no, but you can <laughs> add. Well, that'll make a good actor. Exactly. That'll make a good actor. Yeah, Billy Bob Thornton really. said you got to be thinking about yeah. something when you're in the scene, even if you're not talking. So that's true. there you go. So Madonna. NDA, obviously. Yeah. You signed an NDA. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, yeah. I mean, and we're out. And we're out. That, and we're out. Okay. Know, that's, moving on. That's moving on. Yeah. Course, so then yeah. you go, you got the big ones. And then Sting. So Sting's a bass player. He yeah. created a lot of lines. They play yeah. They play not only jazz, rock, but kind of, you know, ska and all that. How easy was he to work with? And did he say, take my bass lines and do whatever you want with them? He did. That's exactly what he said. And a lot of times he, you know, he'd say, man, you know, I play it, you know, bass line he wrote and. He's like, yeah, man, it's not written in stone. You can do what you want. Writes great bass lines. Yeah. And if it's, you know, if it's not broke. Well, that tour fun? That was great. Oh, that was, and, you know, Kenny Kirkland. Omar can you do Hakeem. a bass line from one of the, um, what's one of the bigger hits that he did after the police? He did a, uh, that that that's identifiable. Uh, the, 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 the kitten. <laughs> If you love somebody, set them free. Wow. Yeah. wow. Amazing. And every, and every night different? Years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. As you can hear. Are you able to, is music so a part of you that if somebody says, oh, play such and such, you hear it and it just comes out your fingers, right? You don't Not have to. Not necessarily. No. Oh, really? It depends on, you know. I do know, you must know guys who can do that though, right? Well, I mean, there's a certain amount of that, but you know, if there's stuff, if you asked me to play, I, I wouldn't remember, yeah. you know. I always hated music. those guys. I, I grew up with a guy who I don't think he ever had a piano lesson. I know he couldn't read music. Yeah. But he had that kind of ear that if he heard it once or twice, right. he could pretty much sit and get it in five yeah. minutes. And no, I, I play just with go, musicians. wow. No, I play dude. with musicians like that, too. You know, they don't read music. Yeah. But they don't need to, really. Right. Because they've got incredible memory, you know. Some of the, some of the, um, Jaco Pastores, who I'm sure you're, you're aware mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. Um he, the, the, you know, we all look at his, his ability and, and, and how he revolutionized bass. He had an incredible memory. I met him, I met him nine months before I started playing with Miles. And I told him my name, I told him my nickname, and I run into him in a club literally a year later in New York. And he looks up at me and he says, Munch, right? He remembered. Wow. This little, now imagine him, you know, What's the nickname? Uh, Munch. From? Oh, it's a, it's a long story. NDA, <laughs> another NDA, another NDA. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, no, no. But but you know, I was a, I was I was Go. little until until I started playing with these jazz. Wow. You know, until, you know, junior year of high Jocko school. Jocko was incredible. So now the Stones, you hear you you actually wanted to play with him before you got the gig. I wanted to play with Keith Richards. To be really honest, I wanted what was to play it? with so his you, band. Why? What was it about Keith Richards? You, there's a, there's a record. Talk is cheap. It's like his his first solo record to my knowledge. 
um, you know, it's rock and roll, but Bootsy Collins is on the record, you know? It's rock and roll, but, uh, you know, Steve Jordan, who's now playing drums with the Stones, and Charlie Drayton, who's been out with uh, with Bob Dylan, mm -hmm. were in the band, and those were the guys who I knew, and they were like kind of, they were guys coming out of the electric jazz thing, but they, could all, but they also played rock and roll. But it was something about that rock and roll. Uh -huh. It wasn't Elvis's rock and roll. It was much more modern, funky. And so I was like, if that's rock and roll, then I want to move over from the electric jazz thing into that too. And so that was, that was, but then another friend got that gig. And then about a year later, a friend of mine from Chicago called and said, hey man, I hear Bill Wyman is leaving the Stones. And I remember thinking, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you reached out, you have somebody reach out to them? Yeah, I, I, I reached out. I called, you know, the management and said, hey, you know, if, you know, if I heard you guys might be looking for a bass player, or there's a list I'd like to get on. And I later found out that I was kind of already on the list because the Sting movie that we did, we, re, we played at the Mogador Theater, uh, Mick came, came to the show one night and I met him. And when I auditioned for the Stones, he said, remember we met? And I was like, no, I forgot yeah. that I met. <laughs> well, you were the guy with the lips, yeah. right? You know, so now you're going to that, to audition. Yeah. Isn't that daunting? I mean, you know you're good. I played with Miles, but you're walking into the Stones for, for an audition. Well, it's kind of it's kind of both, you know? It's, I mean, first of all, I played with Miles Davis. It's nothing going to really be scary <laughs> to a point. I mean, of course, there's always some nervousness. You know, I, I imagine for you, you know, you walk into a... You know a new thing. You know, there's a, you know, yeah. it, it, it almost feels like it's healthy. Yeah, that there's a little bit of you know, yeah. you, you know, uh, nervousness. But at the same time, you've been there before, right? You know? And again, they were completely charming and 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 uh, put me at ease. Mick, first thing Mick said to me he says, "Remember we met?" And I said, "Yes, of course." He said, "Listen, if you don't know the songs, we'll teach you the songs, and then we'll have the audition." It doesn't get, you know. They all do that. I got to tell know. you, I was at a benefit one time, and mm. we were all, the group of us, we're all actors, and we have to do six McCartney songs, six Beatles songs. Sir Paul comes in for the music rehearsal, and he goes, um, all right, uh, we're going to try one like this, and he's like, yeah, each day, and he sings it, right? Mm -hmm. And we're like, uh-huh. And then he starts singing the next one, and Christina Applegate, who has more chutzpah than any 20 people I know, interrupts him and goes, I'm sorry, Sir Paul, Sir Paul, are you under the impression we don't know these songs? Because <laughs> I'm pretty yeah, sure great, we right. could just burst into 12-part harmonies right, right now. Right. So, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. right, so it's right, funny right, because right. when we talked about coming in, I said, McCartney, great bass player, but he doesn't do what you do. And you said... No, man, McCartney's a badass. I mean, in a way, you know, him and James Jamerson and those guys who were on those early, you know, 60s, 50s, 60s, records they invented electric bass right. so he's one of them you know he's and you do you listen to like something and go i can't believe what he decided to do on something as oh no absolutely absolutely everything because it's sunny this. so then the stones the interesting thing is and i didn't realize this till years later satisfaction we all know that you can't go the do the bass line to satisfaction because there's nothing it's it's so counter to the song yeah uh mm -hmm. Oh, we don't even experience it. Yeah, no, 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 and neither right. did I because I wasn't a big Stones fan. But that's not, uh -huh. I, you know, because <clears throat> um, of course when I was a kid, I was listening to WVON. It's black radio. Uh -huh. the, there were some Beatles tunes that crossed over. There were some Stones tunes that crossed over. Angie was a huge hit. When I was Angie, a kid. yeah, you know? Angie. But even that, it wasn't <laughs> the kind of thing. You know, I was trying to I was trying to learn how to play jazz and fusion, right, yeah. right, right, real difficult stuff. So that wasn't stuff that was really on my radar. It, of course, I heard it, and it made it a little bit easier to learn it. But I didn't know. But how do these songs. guys know in the '60s? Play that line again. Mm -hmm. I can't get. I can't get no. Satisfaction. So you wouldn't have done. You wouldn't have normally played that, right? How did he we know to do that? Bum, 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 but, but that everybody would have done that. You would bum, think that that's the bass line, right. but it isn't. And so so that's what I'm saying is, how did these, how did these yeah. guys? Yeah, exactly. How did these guys know? Young guys in England, how do they know to accelerate it to, to that uh, level? I think they stumbled on it. Stumbled, stumbled, stumbled <laughs> upon it. I mean, great. You know. Great art is not but that's intention. thought out. It's right, something right, that right. you just, yeah. you know. All right, so now you're with the Stones. The audition is what? The final audition? 
Uh, I did two auditions. I did, I did, you know, playing through all the hits, Brown Sugar, and all, you know, all of those things. And um, I got a good feeling, and I thought, you know, if they felt as good about it as I did, I'll, I'll hear back. And a few, you know, a few months later, I heard back, and I went and auditioned on the music that they had written in between that time that became uh, the songs on Voodoo Lounge. So you ended up on that. So album. I ended up, you know, playing. Like, well, we wrote this new song. You know, figure something out for this. And and you know I played through that stuff and it was then that they do asked you me when you're so now you're in the Stones you're a little comfortable doing the recording do you go, I got an idea or do you just shut up and play what they tell you to play or no you just play the idea oh you don't ask you know yeah you just do it you just play the idea. and they're good with all of that well and if it works you know kind of everybody can kind of feel if it works you know or if somebody you know if Mick says well you know try something else try something a little bit more steady or or you know or boom 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 you know just is it fun but you know I, oh I, I absolutely it's fun okay yeah, it's because fun you're loose. crafting this stuff and of course you're crafting it with you know with these, you know with these no. iconic but musicians. to go to to go back a certain step on something like that so I, I was so um, fascinated I went to the Motown Museum you know mm. when I was in Detroit and that was the first time I learned that there was a house band and artists would bring in stuff that. It was the song, but it wasn't the song. Not yet. And these guys would go, bum, dum, 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 dum. And that is the hook. That's, That's how right. we know that song. Yeah. But they never got... No credit. There, there's no, no writing credit. Right. There's no... That's the song. Yeah. What I mean, and I didn't you realize, find yeah. yourself in that position where you're creating such an iconic part of a tune, but you, sometimes. you, you never get to carry that. <laughs> there goes say, that face again. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. No, sometimes it's, yeah. Like it's that way. Sometimes sometimes the, written, the line is already written. Sometimes it's, it's, it's all, even though it's not written, it's, it's, it's kind of said that uh -huh. this should be what the bass does. And right. sometimes you're making something up. You know, just but you know what? Back to Lucifer. I didn't realize it to what Jason said. Mm -hmm. That's a job of a studio musician. Like Michael Jackson. Exactly. I think he said Michael Jackson beat it with three chords. Right. Yeah. Somebody came up, well, a student musician came up with, dun, 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 dun. that's the song. Yeah, right. But yeah. not. There's so yeah. much more. Yeah, no. I'm wow. Sure. That's what musicians do. That's what, you know. And there's even an interview where, I, I believe I'm right on this. I, I could be wrong. But I, 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 somebody was interviewing Michael, and they went, how'd you come up with that bass line? He went, well, you know, I just kind of. And he started, and, and Claimed it is his. Now, maybe it was his. I well, don't know. But, but I, you the, know. Well, he may be even, he's not even thinking in that way. He's saying, he's thinking, I sang what, I sang to the to the musician, right. what you just sang. And the yeah. musician was the one who was able to say, okay, what he's singing it, gives it, me it, a feeling. Here's my interpretation. that's not going to work. Right, so I've got to right, right. yeah. do something to it to make it work in this situation. So I got to tell you, for me, I, 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 when people are complimentary about uh, how funny the Seinfeld show is. Mm -hmm. And they say, it was you four guys, it was you four guys. Mm -hmm. I go immediately to, the writers threw the ball to the two-yard line. Right. Anybody could fall into the end zone. Mm -hmm. yeah. When, you know, I could see to you, hey, Daryl, do it. I got to sort of, mm, uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, uh, and if you turn it into something iconic, my feeling is, if I'm the artist, I'm going, I had nothing to do with that. That was Daryl Jones, man. He yeah. came up with this. But and then your agent calls and your that. publisher, and they go, yeah, he had nothing to do with that. Yeah, I just don't yeah. hear, I, in, in your world, I don't hear artists giving it up like that. No, no, no. And, and, and the same thing, you know, in a way, uh, when we talk about, you know, how funny, you know, the, the, the show is, we don't talk about, oh, that those writers were so funny. Sure. We talk about how you're so funny. Sure. You know what I but, mean? But, you know, uh, at least on our show, I mm -hmm. think all of us were very quick to go, yeah, we had, yeah, <laughs> you know, brilliant. we're standing on the shoulders of a giant. So. Right, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you're, and again, and, and, you know, you think about playing with Sting, yeah. um, you know, the songs that he wrote were great, great vehicles. Yeah. So it's almost, it's a kind of symbiotic thing where he, you know, he's throwing us, He's throwing us a nice slow pitch <laughs> yeah, right, right down in the, the middle. Pipe. So yeah. like, who can't hit that out of the park? Yeah, <laughs> and do you ever, okay, so I reveal, when we do this show, Jason might have been my best friend for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. We bicker. Every Everything is a bicker. Top I mean, three. every I time. And it's real. It's real. It's real. Yeah. Every <laughs> phone call is, how can you not be home? You don't have a lot. It comes from that place. That that said, you know, I, I, his talent is, is enormous. And I watch, you know, I would not watch what he does and how he does it. Um, and the best thing I get is when I can make him go down. When I can make him laugh, I know it's coming, I'm teeing it up, it's like a bass solo, and boom, he goes down. That's the joy. When you're playing, when Sting turns around and goes, what was that? 
Is that the same thing? Does that happen? Or do they not do that when they're playing? It's too cool to turn around and go, Daryl. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, he, he's too busy singing and yeah. you know, being the front man to that. But if, if if I played something and Miles, you know. But Miles was sneaky with that. Like, I remember being on stage one night and I played something. And Miles looked at me and went, what? <laughs> and I played it again. And he went. Oh, a yawn he like, Yeah, like I'm, I'm yawning now because you played the same thing again. Oh. You see what I mean? You know. Ooh, uh, oh, and then you got to go on playing. The guy yeah, just did it. And then yeah, you go, uh, I would be destroyed. I'd be in a, yeah. in a fetal position. No, 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 no. I mean, it's just oh, like, so the you stones, know, it's just stones. like, the, stay sharp. It's the, like, yeah. I'm digging what you're doing, yeah. but still stay sharp. Here's what's you know? amazing to a, a remedial like me. They're having this conversation... And the notes are still going. Yeah, yeah, I'd be the go, B flat, A, G flat, a half note. Da, 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 you know? Now, with the stones, does that happen where they look at you? Because, you know, on stage, I've seen you do with the stones a number of times. And there's that whole where you get your back up against uh, Charlie. You know, it's that whole thing where you're doing a thing. And he's going, I'm grooving. Yeah, you're grooving. Is that choreographed like that's at, uh, eight minutes in every night? Oh, no, or no, no. or do you really, do you get the, the no. hit back from them? I don't know. It's, a, it's a, you know, it's a, all of that stuff is an improvisation. Rock and roll is um, th there's an irreverent nature about it, you know, and it's so, different in the way from, you know, a show tune or a jazz tune. Um, it's, there's a little, particularly with the Rolling Stones, man, there's a little bit of round, uh, a square peg in a round hole, you know, and that quirk is part of it. It's almost like when you go to a wedding and the band, particularly wedding of a musician, band's going to be incredible <laughs> and they play a stone song and you're going something's not right about it yeah it doesn't have that little level of chaos there's right. got to be a little bit of i was just going to say kind of you, you have know, to have confidence but you use that term chaos a lot it's you know every night's a little bit different you know keith doesn't play the same thing twice you know he's does he know he's not playing the same thing twice <laughs> yeah, oh yeah no 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 absolutely no 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 you'd be surprised man you know they're on yeah. it right yeah are know. they oh by so okay jason and i went on tour we did a, a comedy tour, and they asked us, do you want a rider? And we felt, who are we? Ride? We don't need a rider. Yeah. And then I found out why you do need a rider, because I think it was at the Count Basie Theater in New Jersey oh, wow. that um, our dinner was provided by a mother and daughter with a crock pot in the basement um, because we didn't have a rider. And Jason and I looked at each other and went, you know, we should write some things down that maybe we want to eat because who knows what we're getting. We're getting a ligament sandwich somewhere else. Yeah. It's frightening if you don't do it. What is what is the Rolling Stones rider like? I can't even imagine. Well, it's there are more than one, you know. Yeah, I was going to say things that every, yeah. you know. So what kind of stuff is backstage? I can't even imagine. Well, they used to, you know, it's, it's changed over time, but there used to be a huge snooker room, you know, a with a snooker table. With a snooker. Well, they would make a room, you know, out of you know, oh curtains my and God. and that was one of the things that was around for a while. We had the the banks of of the the video racing games where you sit down and. That was around for a while. That they've kind of cut back on that. And food kind of wise, stuff. but in terms of food, you know, Keith has what he loves. You know, mixed. what does he love? What's what's like? What's Keith eating? I think everybody knows it, so it's not like I'm giving you know shepherd's pie. Keith's, oh, okay, Keith's like like shepherd's, shepherd's pie. pie. You know, I'm British. They have their, their own cook. Yeah, they're good. <laughs> their own cook. I'm guessing. Yeah, say that again. Their own cook. Uh, yeah, there's a you know person that they you know. That, yeah. That they and do they come up to you that. and say, "What do you feel like today?" or um, there's so much food backstage, but I have also, you know, me and Chuck Lavelle, keyboard player, we, we share a dressing room. So we have our rider, you know. Only green m &Ms? Is, uh, is that what it is? I don't like, I don't <laughs> like the blue ones. I, I really uh, don't like blue, But you yeah, know the story, answer. you know what the reason is for that, right? <laughs> yeah, so that's So they read the rider. Yeah, but rider. so what's on yours? What do you ask for? No, the green salad, uh, you know, pistachios. But I have to have, you know, pre-cracked pistachios because i there you know you i don't go. want to crack do you know how much pistachios cost do you, you know take what, them home every you know what, after every day you're, you're filling your you know what's so expensive sick. <laughs> on my right the food on my rider for personal appearances would make it seem like i am the cleanest healthiest eater on the planet because i'm embarrassed to go well <laughs> you're right <laughs> i'd like a cheesecake and a you know you're right. <laughs> too embarrassed so i eat better backstage than i eat anywhere else in by life. the way just you so know. you know so i know jason a long time 30 plus years and I've done TV shows, and it's like a peanut butter jelly sandwich and a roll, and maybe maybe licorice. Seinfeld when it became number one, oh. it, it the table went forever. It was almost a joke. It went for miles, and it was anything and you could ever imagine that you would want, other than a suckling pig being roasted. There were, there were two by the last five seasons. There were two catered meals a day. <laughs> oh, really? I, I I remember being in the office when uh, someone came in 
to interview for the role of being the caterer for the next season. <laughs> and she said, what's, what is your budget? And Jerry said something I'd never heard. He went, unlimited. And I'm, unlimited? Yeah. <laughs> An unlimited uh, budget right, for right. catering. And yeah. how the hell, I got to tell you, 79, Mick's 79, Keith is 79, Ron is 75. And you stand there, what are the shows? Two hours, almost two hours? 210, something like 210, that. 210, and yeah. he's moving the entire show is he being injected with some kind of embryo thing is there something we don't know about is there what's going on because that's impossible it really is impossible you know it's interesting because i you know i asked keith i mean uh mick once about the fitness thing and he said to me he says well you know my dad was a phys phys ed teacher and he said when i was a kid he didn't ask when i when he came home from work he didn't ask me did you do your homework he said did you run or did you hike wow so it's in, you know, it's kind of one of those things where the, yeah. the, the lessons that you learn when you're a kid, you, you know, you develop but, them. But, and of course, when you're you know, teens, you get away from them. You ever get uh, called out by a kid or something that saw you, that was moved by you, mm -hmm. and wants to know something? It, it, not a fan of the Stones thing. It's more of a fan of the music thing. And how do you do this? Can you explain this to me? Does that happen a lot? Um, it doesn't happen a lot, but, but, but from time to time, you know, I've had people come to me and say... Um, or even you know like experienced you know you know you know ba bass players come to me and say man you know what really struck me about the gig was was um, not your solo or not the you know the feature that you're featured in but that every note that you were playing seemed to be endowed with you know with all this feeling and and you know and like that when when you know I remember this guy wrote me this long email about that and I was like that's maybe the finest compliment yeah. that I've ever that you play you know, with total I've, intention you're totally that, yeah, present you know that you're you know that every note is there's no wasted you know I'm not you know there's no frills there's no tricks it's like this is the you know this is and in, in a way it's like you say this is how I feel about this and and if that if I'm doing that properly then it it goes out right you know into the audience do you ever out. I told you I get nervous watching now that I know more about players, I read a thing about Phil Collins, great drummer, and he's got a great drummer playing with him when he's touring. Yes, but the great drummer would say he'd look at me because I'd had a little fill somewhere, and he'd know it. And I'm going, it's that level where in a two-hour concert, you know where a three-second jump fill is that shouldn't have been there, and it's that it's that level of playing. Yes. Yeah. No. I mean, yeah, because you don't you don't get to play music without listening. You know, you got to listen, and, and and everything that you're, and particularly, I didn't realize how much everything that's going on behind you really matters until I stood and sang in front of a band. Mm. And you're trying to sing this tune and you're trying to remember the lyrics and you're trying to also emote, you're trying to tell the story. And somebody in the back is doing something. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's kind of like you, uh, you can it's messing you up. It. It's you messing know, you, and you, you know, up. And you there know. again is, is the crossover between our disciplines because I won a Tony Award on Broadway. And I, you bet, I thanked from the bottom of my heart my entire company. And people go, why? And I go, because no matter, yeah, I'm down center. I got a spotlight. Every eye is on me. And I got 40 people behind me doing this thing that's supposed to support and lift and focus my performance. But if the guy in the last row, third from the end, decides he's not into it tonight and he doesn't do what he was hired to do. There's nothing I can do in that spotlight yeah. that isn't going to put every eye on him and tell a totally different story. Right. So it is such, it, it is so collaborative. It, it is, is so about community. It is so about ensemble. And I, I always think about that. Do, you know, I always think, does the lead singer know, do they know yeah. how much that band can just rob them of it. So yeah. it, it is, I always think that must be the most beautiful. I would imagine if I was, you know, back in a band, I only did school bands, but but to be in a band that's on stage and you guys are cooking and that energy is going and everybody is in that it's be best, groove. the best thing in the world. Oh. And you're going, we are there. We're there. You know, it, it, that's got to be the most exciting thing. Miles would come out on stage. We'd be playing <laughs> groove, you know. He'd come out on stage and just stand there. And the minute that everything gelled, then he would start playing. Wow. So he would wait. Ask him about it, and he'd be like, Dell, if the band is grooving, I can play anything that'll work. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> it's like it's one of those things where you know wow. it's all if everything you know if all the support is working you can it's like yeah. you have wings you can yeah. try yeah, the love things and they seem to all work you the know? level of so we get to hear the love the joy you could go see the stones and there's a lot of moving parts that you don't even you take for granted about what's going on up on stage can I, before we, we ra- start rapping mm-hmm. Charlie, you just lost Charlie. Mm, um, yeah. And I, I hear about it all the time. You hear the, the talk about, I'm locked in, I'm locked in. It's always a drummer and the bass player. What does that exactly mean? Because I'm sure you played with guys where you just don't lock, no matter what it is, um, you're playing with them, but it's just not happening. It won't happen. But some guys you do, and automatically it happens. At, you know, I, I've been really lucky with that, man. I've played with so many of the great guys. It's rare now that I play with somebody who doesn't, you know, who is not trying to give in that way. And so we find, you know, we find it's different with everyone else, but with every, you know, every different, different musician, but yeah, I haven't played that with, you know, I played with a great drummer. Um, he plays drums with Steely Dan. His name is Keith Carlock he plays with, you know, a lot of people, but he's been playing the Steely, Steely Dan gig for a number of years. The way he swings, the way he, you know, grooves, it's like, it's, it's like a bed that you can just fall into. I was going to tell. So, what was it with Charlie? Was Charlie the lock? Charlie was. It's. It was it's this interesting thing because again, he was this really steady, you know, musician, but there was. But it was also quirky, you know, and 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 again, like I say, you can have an, you know another great you know Steve Jordan who's taken you know is, is, is you know playing in his place now, is a, I guess you would consider a much more. Um, educated and learned musician um um he can't recreate the same kind of chaos or the same kind of quirkiness Mm -hmm. that charlie did charlie charlie watts was um um really an enigma charlie you know charlie collected very particular cars very particular uh, antique cars but he didn't drive you know he was a very public you know per, you know but he was a very private person yeah. you know what i mean he there were these contradictions about also the him. clothing so, i never knew that sartorially he loved clothing oh, right no man you know you never saw anybody as when charlie was dressed up really dressed up it's rare to see someone that dressed wow. up with everything in the right Immaculate, place, right? without it being making him look like a mannequin. I mean, yeah, he, he's, yeah. he's very comfortable. Yeah. So, do you guys hang you know? like when you were on tour with the Stones? Oh man, me and Charlie, who's hanging? You hanging, hanging, shopping, 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 shopping for clothes. He would take me to his his shirt tailor in Tokyo and his 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 shoe cobbler and uh, <laughs> or sh- I mean, they they called cobblers at that level. Oh my gosh, you know, upper level, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, it has been a gift coming to you today on this episode of Really. No, really. It has been a gift. Peter, thank you for the gift of your friendship. Daryl, thank you for the gift of your wisdom. And now friendship. You're and part your of beautiful it. music. Thank you. uh, David, Laurie, thank you for the gifts that you give us now and uh, hopefully during the holiday season. And thank you for watching. <laughs> uh, let me just say, for those of you that are interested, uh, you, can, you can find Daryl Jones at DarylLJones.com. Follow him on Instagram and Facebook at Daryl I. Jo- Daryl. L. Jones, right? No, Daryl Jones. Del, uh, Dar- oh, just, D- there's no two R's. R's. Dar- oh, I see what it is. Yes, 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 yes. Instagram, Facebook, at Daryl Jones Basis. That's right. Well, you can find us online at reallyknowreally.com. Instagram and TikTok, we are at Podcast. You can leave us suggestions for your own Really No Reallys there. We will try and get to them. If we do one, we'll credit you and give you nothing, and that'll be your gift. And I also want to say, watch In the Blood. It's a, you can catch it on who, yes, whatever. Um, one, Amazon Prime a- and Amazon Prime. Apple yeah. it's, a, it's killer, and you got Charles, everybody's talking about you, which is really cool. And while, you, and while you're watching things, go to YouTube, watch us there, and then you can subscribe and rate, because Peter, we want how many stars? As many stars as are the gallon. Five. That's we right. release new episodes every Tuesday, so follow us on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast. <laughs> 